Yeah, hello and welcome to the FDT TV podcast. We are today taking up a challenge where it sees us not mentioning a certain thing that's been relevant in football this week. Um, I don't know how long it will last, but that's the aim. We're, we're going to be positive this week, Mike, because that's what football brings us. It is nothing but positivity and light. Um, mm-hmm. Well, the floodlights do anyway. Uh, but yeah. anyway, Arsenal... I was going to say one, but you didn't. Um, so, Whole so, week. so, so, without mentioning something, the unmentionable. Yeah, I mean, the ball did go out. Um, so, <laughs> officiating—it's not great, is it? Uh, that's not the no. thing we're mentioning. Uh, but yeah, how 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 did you you think? Other than that incident, how do you think you played? Right. So, uh, are we just talking Premier League, or are we going to go the League Cup as well? Oh, yeah, well, why well, we beat you in the league cup, didn't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that's yeah, what I said. Did. It was a bad week last week. And, and yeah, we, let's go league cup then. Let's go league cup. How did that make you feel? And I, I didn't really get in with any any banter with it, really. No, no, um, you didn't. I was quite surprised. But you were, you did have a prior engagement with your uh, with your good lady I wife. I did, yes, so yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, um, I, I completely understand. And to be honest, I'm very grateful that you had that planned because yeah. it was... Um, well, I think just to sum up last week's um, efforts, uh, dog shit. Fair <laughs> I enough. I think is the, the the best way to describe it. So obviously the game against West Ham, six changes I think were made um, to the team uh, that beat uh, Sheffield United. I think it was. Yep. Um, yeah, I've got to be completely honest, mate. It was. We were under the... In fact, no. No, that's a complete lie. I think we started really well for the first five or ten minutes and then went swiftly downhill after that. Yep. Uh, there was a couple of chances I think we could have gone 1-0 up within the first five or ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you scored. It was a bit of a sucker punch. And then we never really got into the game. Um, I've got to say full credit to West Ham. I thought you guys were absolutely brilliant closing us down high pressure as as i've said to you before you've got your um your understanding of west ham arsenal is, is very simply if you come at us we struggle <laughs> if you don't if you don't give us that freedom to uh to pass the ball around it's like a rabbit in a headlight sideways and backwards passing yeah um obviously we've got some injuries to some key personnel so martin erdegaard is out with a hip injury at the moment gabriel jesus is out with a knee injury um Thomas Partey still out. Uh, Trossard, I don't know why he was on the bench. If I'm being completely honest, because um, I... I think he offers, or he certainly offered more in the ten minutes that he came on the pitch um, than Eddie and Ketty did for eighty minutes. If I'm being completely honest, yeah, but honest. Eddie Ketty scored a hat trick, didn't he? <sighs> yeah, but so he's the, the, the world's the... best striker, mate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, <laughs> no, it's. It's it's immensely frustrating because obviously that- we saw how well Eddie played against Sheffield, um, but he's so inconsistent. But this is what we unbelievable. This, this is what we've said for a while. Is he he is a good sort of mid to lower table Premier League striker because of his consistency. You did score with the last kick of the game, which I thought was a little bit. A little like, mm. I didn't anticipate us winning in the manner that we did I've got to be totally honest um, yeah. but I mean it was date night but the, the missus did let me watch it while I was eating my dinner so I ate really slowly um, <laughs> so, I mean don't tell her that uh, she just thought I was being nice and spending a long time up the table but um, yeah no we, uh, it was good we're through to the quarter final thought yeah we're going to get Port Vale we're going to get to the semis we'll have a good run in the league cup and then we drew Liverpool so we're going to be out next round anyway so it don't really matter Um but moving on swiftly to the Premier League, um, subjective decisions. No, we can't mention subjective decisions because that would be mentioning the thing. Manchester United got a goal ruled out for a subjective decision. Yep. Uh, a decision that shouldn't have been subjective. Uh, it was an offside. It's a black and white rule as far as we know. They made it subjective. They even commented that it was subjective. That's as far as we can go with that. But they did get the right result in the end because Bruno Fernandes scored in the 96th minute, something Six. like that. A uh, yep. lot of late goals, I think, this weekend. 
Um, so so uh, things turned out right there. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, is he going to keep his job in, 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 a, in a short? Does he uh, see Christmas? In a short, yes. In a, in a short, yes. I think he will keep his job. Um, he's picked up two, two wins this week as well, I think, against Fulham and against... Um, brain fart completely. Who did they play at the weekend? That was against Fulham, wasn't that it? Was Who did they play in the cup? Uh, don't know. I've got it in front of me. Newcastle. And they sorry, they lost against Newcastle. Um, and I think people were saying that if he loses his next game, then there's a potential that he will lose his job. I I disagree. I think he will keep his job um, at least up until Christmas, regardless of any further results, um, because you can see glimmers of what he's trying to get onto. Um... They've got a number of major injuries as well, haven't they? When you yes. look at it. Casemiro's out, um, Varane's out, Martinez is out, uh, Shaw's out, I think wan Saka's out. Like, there's a number of first-team players that are out injured, so you have to give them a little bit of leeway. Um, yeah. So, so next, I would say, uh, Emmy Martinez... Going a bit bananas, uh, a bit like your camera on my screen for the second. Yeah, I'll Don't just know, what the hell's going on there? <laughs> With Anonymous, mate. Maybe they found us. They found Stockley Park have found us. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that's happening. Uh, we'll just we'll just talk through it for the moment because we've still got sound. We've just got a little bit of, of, of that. Oh, we're back. Um, there we go. So, uh, <laughs> where, where was I going? Uh, Stockley Park, they're on to us. Yeah, no. Uh, before that, who, what game was I going to talk about? Aston Villa, Emmy Martinez. Aston Villa, yes. Uh, yeah, that's it. He, he won a World Cup. He got a golden glove. Uh, I think at that point, people still thought he was good and funny, uh, especially with some of his celebrations. He won the Yashin Award, uh, the Ballon d'Or ceremony, and he was nominated mm-hmm. quite highly uh, up the Ballon d'Or list. Uh but since then, he's made two absolute clangers. Um, and I don't want to say it's, that's going to continue, but my theory is all of those awards are going to make him think that he's the best goalie in the world. Um, and and he will stop trying. I, I, I think it will go to his head a little bit at, and he will fall off a cliff in terms of form and performance and then he'll never rediscover it. Now, that's just my theory. Uh, but what was your take on it? Because obviously he was at Arsenal for a long time, did well when he came in. Um, I think he was probably a little bit sad to lose him when you did. Um, but but do you think he will pull it back or do you think it's that's it, it's crazy time now for him? Well, whatever happened, is it's definitely Arsenal's fault. So um, if, if that's definitely going to come back to us somehow at the weekend uh, <laughs> because we didn't give him the... Um, the number one slot when he uh, uh, when he left. So, um, no. In all seriousness, I, I, do you know what? I I tend to agree with you. I mean, there's there's certainly a an arrogance about him. Yep. Uh, as it stands at the moment, I think they won the was it the Concaf Trophy? Yeah. Not Concaf. Uh, whatever it Something is, like the that, um, yeah. the the South American World Cup, whatever it was. Um, and then you had obviously the World Cup win, and. Up Dare I say it, he has had moments of brilliance. Yeah. Uh, certainly in an Aston Villa shirt. Um, pulled off some amazing saves, but there is that level of arrogance about it. And I do agree with you that he's potentially going to let it go to his head now. Mm-hmm. Um, what head, we we don't know, especially when he's put in a face like, <laughs> like that. Um, <laughs> but um you'd you'd like to think because i I, th- I think after that celebration i think even unai emery come out and gave him a bit of a dressing down mm. um so it wouldn't surprise me if he did get a bit of a dressing down at the weekend um telling him to kind of get back get back in his box mm. sort of thing so um yeah it, it has every potential to to go a bit tits up um but i think that he um, might have got a bit of a dressing down and yeah. we'll see him rediscover his form. Subsequent question to that, mm-hmm. if if he, if he we're correct and his form goes off a cliff, I imagine Emery will be looking for a new goalkeeper sooner rather than later because, as we know, a good goalkeeper can, can win your leagues, win, win your titles. Do you think Aaron Ramsdale may be on that list of people they would look at? Potentially. 
And it, I, do you know what? I, that I would be genuinely gutted for because he's been absolutely brilliant for the majority of the last couple of years since he's come in for us. He's been an absolute shining light. Um, granted, has made a couple of mistakes and even in the, uh, the League Cup, you could see a little bit of nervousness and I think the West Ham fans picked up on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be a loss to us massively the, if he was to go considering that guy. Raya's even on loan yeah yeah no, that's, that's fair enough uh, so so next I think we'll, we'll tackle the, the West Ham Brentford quickly um, because obviously we won and, and the theory was if, if Moyes lost six on a trot he would go we've won one we've then gone back to losing where I think we probably should have won we were two one up uh Kudus with a phenomenal goal. Uh, what a talent. We need to keep hold of him and actually bring in a manager next year after Moyes has gone that plays to our, our team strength. We've got a lot of tricky uh, passing players with a lot of skill and and it doesn't Moyes football doesn't really I want to say suit it, but it doesn't doesn't lend itself to to that sort of player. Um, but he's he's thriving, um, really good. So we should have gone three one up, and I think if we, if we had, I think that would have been a step too far for Brentford to to come back from. But Ben Rama was there, about to tap it in, and Antonio stretches out a leg, kicks it out, goes flying, and Ben Rama goes a little bit mental at him. Um, it's one of those where, as, as I said, say said to you before the podcast started. It, I was a little bit shocked because that's not the sort of mistake you should be making at the top level. There should be better communication there, even if it's someone putting a name on it. That's the very basic sort of playing in the park, put a name on it. Um, so, yeah, Brentford did fight back under Thomas Frank and win the game. Uh, can't really fault them. I think both teams had spells of, of really good football. I think they had more opportunity, more chance. Um, and um, you have to say on the day probably a deserved winner if you look at it take a step back and look at the game as a, an overall um, we, we've you, you've got to go again uh, I, I don't think it was terrible considering we didn't have Alvarez we didn't have Paqueta they were both serving bands um, and Mavropanos put a ball into our his own net um, but not wrong with that we've seen we're, some blinding and goals recently yeah we'll pick it up and we go again we've got Olympiacos uh, on Wednesday Thursday Thursday I think that's at home uh, so again a difficult game they put a stop to our, our European winning record um, so a difficult game before taking on Nottingham Forest Nottingham Forest which again could be could be a difficult game uh, depends on what Nottingham Forest turn up um, but I think we need to then touch on very briefly uh, Manchester City. 6-1. Haaland didn't even get on the score sheet. Uh, and he went off at half-time. So every, everyone who had him triple captained in their fantasy team, like me, only got three points. Um, how does a team score 6-1 and, and not, not have him score? Um, obviously, they're playing young boys today. I think he's. I think he must be picking up a knock because it by by the Sky Sports thing, it, it said he he's starting. There was news that Harlem was starting, so I don't know whether he's got. I've picked up a knock, but he's not. He's not quite as. Um, yeah, he's he started. He scored a pen. <laughs> oh, okay. But I, I they're already one nil up. I don't, I don't think he, he's so <laughs> like sort of not robotic like, but but do you know what I mean? That that Terminator like player that we see last year um, in front of goal, he's he's not not as prolific. Is the word I'm looking for? Do you think that maybe have something to do with Kevin De Bruyne not being in the team and being able to put a, a, a ball on a sixpence? Yeah, potentially. Um, <clears throat> they were. Obviously, fundamental to uh, City's title success last year. Um, and at the start of the season, De Bruyne's, um, De Bruyne's injury has obviously hit Man City hard um, by the fact they've already lost two games, including us, yeah. uh, or inc against us, where historically they've absolutely run riot mm -hmm. um, over us. Yeah, I have no doubt that they would be even more comfortable with Kevin De Bruyne in the team. Yeah. Um, 
as in in general and i do agree that yes he would make a massive difference i think to he, um the Bruyne up for me changes the way city play because he, he he has got that about him to look up and look for the pass where you've got the likes of Grealish, Foden, Doku, Bernardo Silva, very much I'm going to run at the player um, mm-hmm. and take him on with a skill and trickery. It's, I mean, it's still good to watch, but you don't get that, oh, I can see a man making a run and put it exactly where it needs to be. So we'll wait and see. Um, I still think he'll end up probably top goal scorer. Um, but not maybe not as not as many as last year. We'll wait and see. Yeah. Um, and, and that moves us swiftly on. I think, too, one of the most talkative, exciting, uh, prolific Monday Night Footballs of, of forever. Um, yep. It got everyone talking, one way or another. Uh, some things that may must not be named. Uh, yep. Took, took, took uh, the pedestal of the game. Uh, ended 4-1, so, so Tottenham fans... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it uh, was the first time ever in the Premier League we've seen a 0-7-1 formation played because they had two people sent off and I think those two people should have been sent off a lot earlier in the game um, but yeah two two last gasp goals well I say last gasp goals it was 26 minutes of added time for God's sake um, so, so a goal in the 96th and 97th minute really mean anything do they um no but i mean i think let, let's talk about the the uh, some of the key points we won't necessarily name anything can, as to what but but the adogi challenge on raheem sterling we mentioned it we, we spoke about it briefly beforehand and, and i think we both were in agreement and and i would like to know other football fans feelings on it but he he lunged him with two feet Raheem Sterling see it and lifted his foot up, otherwise it would have been planted. Uh, they gave me a yellow card on the basis that uh, Raheem Sterling got out of the way. Um, so the ref watch, which I, I was reading uh, earlier, said had his foot been planted, it would have been a red because that would have then been a dangerous challenge. So <sighs> it seems to be a running theme this weekend, doesn't it? Reckless, not dangerous. Yeah, well, uh, I can't remember. Pe- pe- petulant, I think, was the word they were using a lot as well. Um, but it's one of those that. So what they're saying is Raheem Sully should potentially, or, or should, in that case, um, have to be sub- subject to a career end, potential career-ending challenge for the player to be deemed as dangerous. Which to me is the wrong way round. If it's it was it was off the floor, it was both feet, it was at speed, and it was sloppy. If that's not endangering a player, I don't know what is. I'm not saying don't don't tackle with passion. I love a big tackle, not in that way, you dirty bastard. I see it run through your mind, but but do you know what I mean? Um, I I, I love a big challenge, but that's the sort of challenge I think is universally hated. Yes. Um, uh, again, it's a, a, a couple of ch- a couple of challenges we've seen very similar to that this weekend. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I get what the Premier League are trying to do uh, in terms of the flow of the game and all that sort of stuff. They're trying to improve it. <clears throat> and obviously people crowding around the referees and all this sort of stuff. They're trying to obviously remove from the game. Yeah. Um, but we've seen some nutty boy challenges flying this weekend mm-hmm. that uh, are, are overlooked. And again, I suppose from it, there shall not be names perspective, um, <clears throat> you you kind of have... Oh, one of the words I think has been quite poignant this year is the intent. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, from the side of what they're saying, I, I kind of, I kind of get it that you can't, you can't send someone off for something that didn't, didn't happen. Yep. I, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> uh, I get, I get that obviously he had his foot been planted. It was, um, a potentially a career ending injury. Mm-hmm. but it didn't happen. So they have to go on the basis that it 
it didn't happen therefore the yellow card is justified but i do take it from the the standpoint that it is gonna have to 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 use the ice hockey analogy that we um that we spoke or the the what? incident that we spoke about a couple Net of weeks guards. ago yeah it's it, it's had to take something as serious as that to for ice hockey players for for the the ice hockey board to make net guards mandatory mm-hmm. and i think without without trying to say, uh, sorry without trying to sound sadistic or um wishing anyone to go through should that have sort planted of thing, his foot and taken it like a man take... <laughs> sorry should have planted his foot and taken it like a man yeah exactly <laughs> but do you know what i mean yeah, it's going to end exactly up having to take someone to get injured that badly for someone to go oh because yeah. whatever happens, as you said, everyone loves a crunch and tackle. Yeah. But they like a crunch and tackle to the point where legs fly in, bounce off each so, other because they're coming in the same. So having having played fierceness. football and put in a challenge like that before, not 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 intentionally, just in the heat of a thing, I can tell you what was going through a doggy's mind was like, ah, fuck off. <laughs> Because I'm just going to get the ball and clean oh, you out. I, I can't. You're you're running me ragged. That's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning you out, and that, that's that's what you're getting. That's what was going through his head. They, there wasn't the intent of I'm going to two foot this geezer. It was just that. Wow, oh, fuck it. I'm I'm here. There, there's n- there's no yeah, plan in it. But but if you if you listen to older footballers, they always talk about leaving one on someone, don't they? In the early in the early moments of the game, there yep. are always you hear any stories going back to the eight. Well, I'd say the early nineties back to the seventies. They all talk about leaving one on one. Yeah, because you got away with murder back then. Unfortunately, you've got cameras. I would say everywhere. Well, it, technically, you have got cameras but, everywhere, I, but not necessarily for the right things. So you, yeah. these things will get picked up. But um, gone are the days where you can oh in fact no it's not that they're not gone are the days no because, because you can still do it had... <laughs> sorry you can still do it provide the person yeah. moves a little bit um yeah so my you you talking about those stories my favorite one of them was vinnie jones i can't remember who he said he was playing but he was playing for wimbledon um and he said the referee looked one way to check our goalkeeper he looked the other way and as he looked the other way he started running so by the time he looked back and blew his whistle he was already over the halfway line at which point, four seconds in, he just crunched someone. I'll see if I can find it. It, it, it was a brilliant story. It really made me laugh because I thought, I've done that too. <laughs> My days where I was young and fit and played as a midfielder. It's just like, ah, oh, I'm going to... Especially in PE, when there's that kid who's yeah. in like, like, crunch. He yeah, didn't even have I've, a ball, but... but... Yeah, it's, it is ridiculous. And I do, th- I, did, I do genuinely think he's going to have to take someone to have that sort of injury in order yeah. for the um the current regime of referees to to yeah. be or to receive further training. Yeah, I mean I we've said it before, we've said it again. I mean Tonali has received a 10 game ban for betting. I think there's there's a lot more going on than than the Premier League want to let on. Um obviously they they did Tony for it recently. Um and I th- I think they're going to get caught out at some point. With the PGMOL, I think that I think that's why the reason they changed the head. That's I think that's the reason why they've sort of rebranded it a little bit um, because they they're wrapped up in things they don't want to be associated with. Uh, but that being said, Reese James was back in the squad and Tot- uh, Tottenham uh, Chelsea got a good result. So could we see them fly back to the table? Who knows? Well, only time will tell. Um, but we did predict some score lines this week and. Mike, what games did we predict? So we did West Ham Arsenal in the League Cup, obviously head to head between uh, your good self and me. Uh, you, you went for three one to Arsenal. I went two one to Arsenal. I did think it was going to be a tougher game, and didn't expect the scoreline it was. Um, Got the right but, result yeah, we, the wrong way round. Okay. Yep. So zero points each um, for this week. For for those of you that are new, we get one point for a correct result. Three points for a correct score. Um, no so, points yeah, nothing, zero yeah. points there for, for either of us. Uh, Brentford West versus... No, oh, bloody hell, I can't talk. Brentford versus West Ham. You went for 3-0 to Brentford. I went 2-1 <coughs> to West Ham. It was 3-2 to Brentford. So, one point to you, zero points to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Newcastle versus Arsenal. 
You went for a 1-1 draw. I went for a 2-1 win to Arsenal. Score was 1-0 to Newcastle. Zero points each for that one. So grand total out of nine possible points. In you get one. I get zero. Yeah. So the season totals as we stand. In you're currently on 20 points. Leading the charge now. I'm currently on 19. So we we have uh, we have a few more games to um, to predict this week. Uh, Arsenal versus Burnley on Saturday. Yep. West Ham versus Nottingham Forest on mm -hmm. the Sunday. And I think one of the big ones that we've um, we can anticipate over the weekend: Chelsea versus Man City. Uh, obviously, you've mentioned before about. Chelsea, could they be possibly on the upturn? Now, a lot of people wrote Chelsea off yesterday before the start of the yeah. game. They have had a couple of good results um, recently. Uh, so I think this could be an interesting one. But we'll start with um, Arsenal versus Burnley. Um, do you know what? I'm, I'm, it's going to be very difficult for me to uh, to predict this one, to understand what's going on with injuries, etc. Because... Yeah. We've got some key players missing. We've been an absolute shambles, I think, uh, for the last couple of games. Um, obviously, we lost against uh, yourselves and Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Granted, a little bit contentiously over over the weekend, but um, I, I can see this potentially being a bit bit of a banana skin game for us. And I really think it depends on who plays tomorrow in yeah. the um, in the Champions League. And if we pick up any injuries, uh, we can't seem to um, create any chances, um, any meaningful chances. It's not like we've we've challenged the goalkeeper. I think I said um, just before the start of the uh, the podcast, or even in the podcast, uh, eight shots on tar uh, sorry, eight shots on goal, one on target. That's not good enough, yep. especially if we want to be challenging for the uh, for the Premier League. So I'd like to say I'd like to say we'll be back to winning ways, um, but. I think we'll struggle. I'm going to go for 1-1 one, one on that one. It, yeah, it's, I mean, Vincent Company, he's, he's got a philosophy. He's played really well. It, his team seem a little bit void of confidence, is what I would say, uh, because they've gone from smashing everybody to... to I think they've been in, in, in games. They've just not managed to um, dominate in the way that, that, that they did in the Championship. It's going to be a difficult game. Um, I think... Obviously, you've got a game against Seville, haven't you? Tom mm -hmm. not, I was going to say tomorrow. tomorrow. It is tomorrow. It's tomorrow now because it's Tuesday. Um, but yeah, it, it, that 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 potentially is where your priorities got to lie. Um, that's going to be a difficult game. You, you know that is. Um, but I do think, I do think you'll win. I, uh, I'm going to go two one Arsenal. I think Burnley will get a goal, but I think you will pit them to the post. Okay. Moving on, West Ham versus Nottingham Forest on the Sunday. Um, obviously, West Ham hosted Nottingham Forest's first game back in the Premier League um, last season, first game last season, and we got trounced. Um, Nottingham Forest depends on what Nottingham Forest turn up because if they turn up, they are, they've got some big, strong lads in there. That's going to be a difficult game. Uh, it's one that you would like to think West Ham would control possession in. I think we're all we're away as well. No, you're at home. We're at home, okay. Um, so again, that that's a difficult one because if we take advantage of that, the crowd gets behind us, then it's a hard place to play. If if Nottingham Forest come and score an early goal, uh, then also very hard place to play, but the other way around. I'm going to go, and this sounds really boring, I'm going to go nil-nil for the first time this season. I am... Not much more to add on that. I'm gonna go for a one 0 win to you guys. I would, I would like the win. We need some points desperately, but but also, who knows? And that leaves one game to predict. Yep, Chelsea versus Man City, four thirty on Sunday. You want to go first? Yeah, I'm. I'm actually really intrigued by this one um, <clears throat> because, obviously, for the last couple of games, Chelsea. Have I've, we've started to see glimpses of what they can do? Granted, it did have to take um, Spurs down to nine players. I think had they kept all eleven players on the uh, on the pitch, it would have been a massive or a different result. Um, but that being said, I 
I think it's going to be a hell of a lot closer than what some people might expect. Obviously, City, very dominant. Um, but, oh, where do I go with this one? I'm gonna go, I'm uh, I'm gonna go for three one to Man City. I think. Yeah, I mean, so three one to City, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so not not as close as I said it was gonna be. No, I, th- I think uh, the game will be a close game, but I think there will the, be yeah some key moments. Hmm. So here's here's the thing: is Nicholas Jackson will be full of confidence. He's fast. Madrid is getting more confident. He's fast. Uh... I don't know. Rhys James is fast. Rhys James. But I think it's going to be a game of trying to get him behind Man City. um, Because Edison, he's a very good player with his feet, but I don't think he's that great of a goalkeeper overall, like an old-fashioned shot stopper. Um, But but then again, you've got the likes of Doku, who seems to be in hot form. Haaland, you can't ever... If you sleep on him, that's when he he scores his goals. Um, I, 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 I agree with you. I think it's going to be a very hard fault battle and it, it will go one of two ways it will be a complete blowout one way or the other or it will be quite a subdued game mm-hmm. um i think there will be a lot of added time for some for one reason or another but i'm gonna go for i'm gonna go i'm gonna go two one chelsea would love that. I was going to go one nil. Um, I think a last minute shout out to Luton, who almost stole three points from um, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Uh, but Luis Diaz, I think if there was anyone who was going to score, it should have been him. Uh, Lupin Edder in the ninety sixth minute. Um, so fair enough. Return his father. That's um, yeah, not good for anybody. Um, so yeah, but have you got anything else to add, Mike? Because I've got one, one final thing. Ballon d'Or. Lionel Messi. What the hell? We spoke about it last week. I told week. you it was fixed, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, do you know what I loved even more is Erling Haaland's comments. Go um, on, what did he say? So he, <clears throat> I'm obviously paraphrasing. Yeah. So he said he scored the most amount of goals in one season, won the treble, um, and something else. Basically, in the long time. Along the lines of, if Messi had done that, you could understand it. But he was like, "No, don't get it. I'm, uh, I'm not coming to any more of these." Yeah, and I don't blame him. And I think Messi was wise enough um, to say something similar. Of there was more deserving people in this room to to have won this award. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I I think all footballers should boycott it. It, it is a a writer's, a football writer's award. It gets a political vote, much like the World Cup voting is, uh, and the Eurovision. Um, and, and, and to finish off, if that's all we've got, is uh, all I was going to say was uh, fuck VAR. I mean, we did 32 minutes of it. <laughs> I, I can't do it anymore. Fuck I hate you, it. VAR. I hate fuck. it. Bloody fuck. <laughs> I mean, f- 33 minutes are not mentioned in it. Fuck it. I, I don't care. We're at the end of the episode. If you hate VAR too much, you sure you subscribe. Um, but until then, uh, or well, next week, I've been Ian. I've been Mike. And we will see you very, very soon. Ciao, ciao.